The P-40, a single-engine, single-seat, all-metal fighter and ground-attack aircraft, was the brainchild of American aircraft designer Donovan Berlin. First flown in 1938, this aircraft, with its distinctive shark's mouth nose art, quickly became an icon. The development of the P-40 began with the Curtis P-36 Hawk, which had shown promise but lacked in performance. It was Donovan Berlin who took the airframe of the P-36, made modifications, and added an inline Allison V-1710 engine to it, effectively creating the P-40. The design of the P-40 was straightforward and robust. Known for its ruggedness and reliability, the P-40's greatest strength was perhaps its ability to withstand considerable battle damage. It had a good dive speed and was very stable, excellent features for a ground attack aircraft. In operational terms, the P-40 truly saw action on a global scale, spanning several different theaters during the Second World War. The Royal Air Force's Desert Air Force operated the P-40 in the heat of the North African desert. Here, the P-40's ruggedness proved invaluable, dealing with the harsh, sandy conditions and demonstrating a solid performance against Axis forces. The aircraft was involved in major battles such as El Alamein, providing air cover and supporting ground operations. The Soviet Union received a large number of P-40s via the Lend-Lease program. They played a significant role during the desperate defensive actions of 1941 and 1942, helping to stem the German advance. Soviet pilots initially struggled with the unfamiliar aircraft, but with time, they started to appreciate the fighter's ruggedness and firepower, especially when used in low-altitude ground attack roles. Perhaps one of the most famous P-40 engagements was in the Pacific Theater with the American Volunteer Group, also known as the Flying Tigers. Under the command of Claire Lee Chenault, this group painted their P-40s with a distinctive shark mouth design, adding to the aircraft's legacy. Despite being vastly outnumbered, they put up a valiant defense against the Japanese forces over China and Burma, boosting Allied morale. Down under, both the Royal Australian Air Force and the Royal New Zealand Air Force made extensive use of the P-40. In the Pacific theater, the P-40 was often the only fighter available in quantity to counter Japanese advances, and it served bravely in multiple defensive and offensive operations. After Italy's armistice with the Allies in 1943, the Italian co-belligerent air force received a number of P-40s, which were used in combat against German forces. These aircraft, once again, demonstrated their adaptability and usefulness in different scenarios. The P-40 also saw service in the frigid conditions of Alaska. During the Aleutian Islands campaign, P-40s engaged Japanese forces, their pilots often having to battle tough weather conditions as well as enemy fighters. From the searing heat of the desert, the vast cold of Eastern Front, to the tropical Pacific and even the Italian peninsula, the P-40 earned a reputation for being a reliable workhorse. Despite its shortcomings in high-altitude performance and speed against some contemporary fighters, it proved that with the right tactics and brave pilots, it was an aircraft that could truly make a difference. Over the years, the P-40 saw many modifications. The P-40C, for instance, added self-sealing fuel tanks and armor. The P-40E introduced 6.50 caliber wing-mounted machine guns. The P-40N, the last mass-produced variant, was lighter, had an improved range, and could carry a heavier bomb load. While the P-40 may not have been the fastest or the most advanced fighter of its time, its robustness, adaptability, and sheer presence in every theater of the war made it a vital part of the Allied war effort. In total, Curtis produced over 13,700 P-40s before production ended in 1944, making it the third most produced American fighter of World War II.